Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, last night, the Scottish Conservatives led a debate and vote here in Parliament on SNP Green plans to introduce highly protected marine areas. These reckless proposals would ban fishing in large parts of Scotland's seas. They would risk thousands of jobs. They would be devastating to coastal communities. The First Minister has said his government will not impose highly protected marine areas on any community that's vehemently opposed to them. So quite simply, can he define what he means in this case by community and what level of opposition will be considered vehemently opposed? First Minister. Before I respond to Douglas Ross, I just want to recognise that today is, of course, International Firefighters' Day. And I want to take the opportunity to thank firefighters right across Scotland for their selfless contribution to keeping us safe. And I want to pay tribute uh, to firefighters, of course, that have lost their lives serving our communities, including uh, Barry Martin. I know that his bravery will serve as a constant and continual reminder of the courage our firefighters demonstrate in a line of duty each and every single day. In terms of uh, the very important question uh, that uh, Douglas Ross uh, raises, let me just remind him, of course, that it is also uh, a Scottish Conservative manifesto pledge uh, to introduce highly protected uh, marine uh, areas. In fact, Douglas Ross didn't just stand on one manifesto, he stood on two manifestos that wanted to introduce highly protected marine areas in some shape uh, or indeed uh, some form. And I heard uh, Rachel, I had the misfortune of hearing Rachel Hamilton's GMS interview a couple of days ago where we had four different positions, I think, on HPMAs uh, in around five uh, minutes. What we've made absolutely clear is that this government will not impose HPMAs on any community that vehemently opposes them. Now, we've done the consultation. We've had enormous response First Minister, to if you could just give me one moment. I'd be grateful if, when a member is speaking, other members were listening. Thank you. Thanks, President Officer. We've done the consultation. It's had a significant response. It's only right we now analyse those responses. And while doing so, of course, Mary McAllen has committed, and I would commit also, uh, to making sure we engage with our coastal uh, and island communities uh, that may well be affected by HPMAs. In terms of uh, what, what, uh, what mechanism we will use, how we will define uh, community uh, in terms of opposition or indeed uh, consent, uh, that will be something that we engage directly with the community. That is why we have done a consultation. We have done a consultation at early inception stage. It would be completely wrong of us to preempt what, uh, what, how, what consent mechanism we end up Members. putting in place or setting the parameters here today. That would, of course, risk excluding some voices uh, that should be heard. But what we will not apologise for is, of course, taking the necessary action we need to to protect our biodiversity. That is incumbent not just in the government of the day, but also in all of us to make sure that we tackle the twin crises of the climate uh, emergency and the loss of our biodiversity. Douglas Ross. Can I begin by associating myself with the remarks of the First Minister on International Firefighters Day? I think my colleague Russell Finlay is speaking in a member's debate immediately after FMQs on this very issue. And we all celebrate and recognise the bravery of our firefighters who do tremendous work day in and day out, putting their lives at risk, which we saw so starkly with the sad loss of Barry Martin earlier this year. But getting back to the answer, which was you know, very long in length, very short uh, in detail, uh, what would be completely wrong, First Minister, is to give reassurances to coastal communities that everything's fine, if they are a community that is vehemently opposed to this, this will not be introduced, and then be completely unable to define what that is. He is trying to give reassurances with no substance behind it. Uh, and speaking about behind, the First Minister just needs to look behind him to Karen Adam, who said in Parliament two days ago, we need clarity on how these communities will be defined and how we will gauge vehement opposition. Even the SNP are saying that. She says we need that clarity urgently. We do. So I'm saying that, and even the SNP benches uh, are saying this as well. But it's already crystal clear that these communities are vehemently opposed to these plans. Just listen, First Minister, to what they're saying. The Scottish Fishermen's Federation said these plans could have a catastrophic effect. A fisherman from the Outer Hebrides said it will be absolutely devastating, and you'll see a loss of population in these areas akin to the Highland Clearances. 
And the Tyree Community Development Trust said, and this is their words, it will be the end of our community. A development trust saying these SNP green plans will be the end of their community. These are damning verdicts on the SNP government's proposals from the people who know the sector best. So why is the First Minister pressing ahead with a policy that will devastate coastal, rural and fishing communities? First Minister. Well, again, I just uh, remind uh, Douglas Ross, because it was not that many years ago, of the manifesto commitment in the Scottish Conservatives' manifesto. I know we'll quote directly. Yeah. We will review the current marine protected areas in Scottish waters with a view to expanding their extent and pilot the introduction of highly protected so marine pilots. areas. So now they're saying they're four pilots presiding officer. That was a very, very different, uh, very different articulation uh, that Rachel Hamilton gave on the radio. Uh, Thank a few, you, members. Uh, days ago, and we know Douglas Ross is known, of course, for flip-flopping all over the place on any issue of the day, uh, flip-flopping on the issue of highly protected marine areas. And of course, Karen Adam was absolutely right. We will, of course, not only define communities, but we will define what consent or what opposition is. But what I'm saying to Douglas Ross very clearly is we should analyse the huge number of consultation responses we have had from those communities before deciding for them or imposing on them or indeed excluding any of those communities uh, from uh, that uh, discussion. What I think we should all absolutely uh, agree on uh, is the fact that we have to take action to make sure our marine environment is sustainable for the future. What is not going to help our fishing communities is, of course, if that marine, uh, envi marine environment is not sustainable. We want to ensure it is so that the future of our fishing industry can continue for many, many years. And I'm, I'm absolutely committed to doing that, uh, not to the communities involved, but hopefully with the communities involved. Dr. Shaw, the, the, I mean, m muted applause from behind him. And if you could see the glum faces uh, on the SNP members, it's uh, incredible. And it's not only coastal fishing and rural communities who are against these plans, who seemingly the First Minister uh, is happy to ignore. Uh, last night, in this chamber, three senior SNP MSPs, all former government ministers, voted against their party on this fishing ban. So let's just listen to what they had to say. Fergus Ewing said, this will haunt the Scottish Government. Alastair Allen said, I have never known my constituency to be so unanimously opposed to any single policy in all of my time as an MSP. And Kate Forbes said, the rarest species in our coastal areas and our islands will soon become people if these proposals go ahead as planned. Does Hamza Youssef realise that he's not only out of touch with coastal communities, but he's out of touch with members of his own party? First Minister. Again, can I remind Douglas Ross uh, of the fact, of course, that this parliament uh, accepted by a majority an amended motion, which, of course, we accepted uh, also and voted for amendments uh, from the Labour Party, uh, from the Liberal Democrats. So there was a number of parties coming together uh, to, of course, propose amendments, which we accepted, and then the majority of this parliament uh, agreeing uh, to uh, that uh, motion. And what I would say to Douglas Ross is there are good examples of, for example, uh, Lamlash Bay, where we have a no-take zone, which the community campaigned for. Thank you, the members. The community wanted uh, in uh, their local area. And, of course, based on the studies that have been coordinated by the community group, we've seen that since that protection was in place, uh, commercially important species such as the king scallop, the European lobster, they've increased in size and age and density. And there's a good example of where we've worked with a community in order for that no-take zone uh, to be uh, implemented. So we're not talking about imposition. We're talking about working with communities up and down uh, the country. And that is the right thing to do, because the trouble with the Conservatives is that they demand that we take action on the climate emergency. They demand that we take action when it comes to, of course, reversing uh, some of the negative impacts uh, and effects uh, of the loss of biodiversity. But whenever we propose action, uh, they oppose it yeah, every yeah, single yeah, step yeah, of the way. Yeah, That's yeah, not going to help our climate, and it certainly isn't going to help our fishing industry or our marine environment in the future. 
Douglas Ross. Well, the, the first... Oh, gosh, it's getting worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. If I had another question, there might be none uh, from an answer from the First Minister. But, but, Thank you. But, but Hamza Youssef was speaking uh, about the response from the Scottish Conservatives. He should be worried uh, about the response from his own backbenches, the rebellion uh, that we've already seen. It, it took Nicola Sturgeon eight years to have her first major rebellion within the SNP ranks. It's taken Hamza Youssef less than eight weeks to achieve the same. He's clearly losing his grip on his party because he insists on pursuing these extreme policies that are opposed by the very communities he wants to impose them on. These reckless plans would ban fishing across much of our sea. It would put thousands of jobs at risk and it would devastate coastal, rural and fishing areas. Coastal communities, the fishing sector and even Hamza Yusuf's own MSPs have all called for the SNP government to ditch their anti-fishing plans. Yet the First Minister is ploughing ahead regardless. So instead of arrogantly dismissing the many valid concerns as he's done so far, will he now do the right thing and scrap these plans? First Minister. What we are doing, of course, and what we have done from the very beginning of this process and this proposal is engage with our coastal and island communities. In total, we've had over 40 meetings with stakeholders. We've already, and I have already stated, the Cabinet Secretary will continue that engagement. For example, prior to the consultation even being launched, of course, there was meetings with over 20 stakeholder groups, including some of those that Douglas Ross has mentioned, such as the Scottish Fishermen's Federation, the Scottish Creole Fishermen's Association, aquaculture groups such as the Salmon, uh, Salmon Scotland, but also important ENGOs as well, such as Scottish Environment Link and community representatives such as Coastal Communities Network uh, and Cosmo. First so Minister, is, is sorry, absolutely... I would be grateful, I appreciate members are here because they have strong opinions on many issues, but it would be grateful if they could keep them to themselves while other members are on their feet to hear the facts and that is the problem uh, presiding officer because the facts are that we have engaged even prior to this consultation I've given an absolute commitment that we'll continue to engage and I've given a commitment time and time and time again in public that we will not impose an HPMAs on any community that is vehemently opposed to it and for Douglas Ross to stand there and talk about losing grip of a party when he has been leader. They've had the, the Conservatives have had the longest attempted coup in Scottish political history. Why doesn't Jamie Green or Liam Kerr just Members. stand up and put Douglas Ross out of his misery? It's hardly a surprise. It's hardly a surprise that Douglas Ross talks about losing grip on a political uh, party. Uh, even he has lost faith in his own political party. He spent the entire Easter recess urging his supporters to vote for the Scottish Labour Party, presiding officer. Finally, finally, Douglas Ross has got his finger on the Thank pulse. You. He's finally caught up with Scottish public opinion. Even Douglas Ross has lost faith in his own leadership of the Scottish Conservative Party.